This is where it all began? This is where it began. It's not even, it's not even believable to me. Yeah, man. So, I mean, imagine you're in Japan, it's like early 1900s, and uh, you're, you're going to try to develop a new koi variety. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, something that's crazy that I, that I just recently grasped is in, if you're a koi breeder, you pretty much have about 50 chances to breed koi in your whole life. And that's not very many chances to breed wait, wait, koi. Wait, explain that deeper. What do you mean? Okay, so uh, if you have a koi farm, maybe your second generation, right? Um, you will start breeding koi, like making your own decisions when you're what, maybe 30, right? I was going to say 25, 30. Right, yeah, yeah okay. so 25. Maybe today, but back then not 25, right? No, right, okay. right, right, right. So even today, so if you're 25 and then you get to make your first decision, I'm going to put these two koi together and breed them, right? So they only spawn one time of year, right? So that's spring. Oh, right. And then next Got spring it. you get to see how those fish turn out, right? right. As two-year-olds. How do they turn out as three-year-olds at four years old, right? So right. now we've used four years just to see if the fish comes out decent, right? Or and has possibilities, then, Yeah. Right? Now you're already 29, right? So um, assuming you, you live a really long, healthy life from 25, we're talking what, that's 75? Right. I don't know too many 75-year-old breeders who are Active. putting fish together. So wow. there's probably less than 50 chances to make koi. That blew my mind away yeah. when I started thinking about it. That's, that's mad respect. And, and this, this goes to, you know, in our $60,000 koi video. Sure. You know, I'm in there with the comments all the time. I do my, my best to answer comments that people ask on our YouTube channel. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, 60000 that's ridiculous. But, you know, when you think about that, when you put that perspective on there, and, and to see that these two fish made kujaku, and some young breeder decided to take that and develop it. Sure. Super cool. Mad yeah. respect. You're taking a huge risk putting these fish that are completely different from each other and you have no idea what's going to happen and then bam because you only have so many ponds to, to raise fish in so Correct. that's that's the real thing that people probably don't understand i have a certain amount of ponds and i'm gonna dedicate a, a, a portion of my real estate sure to try and develop something new exactly and that's why that these fish are worth the money that they are. Absolutely. And then once they get the colors changing, then they got to go on the growth, right? They got to get the big ones. Yeah, they got to make the body the body correct. They got to make the, they got to bring the color out. They got to I mean everything, the skin quality. Do you see it now, Eric? No. So I'm lost. You have this shusui and this kinmatsuba, and this breeder thought to himself, you know what? I'm gonna put these together and see what happens, and. So he bred these two, two koi together, and bam, we have Kujaku today. So right now we're back 100 years. Right. 120 years? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah easily. So we're, we're back 120 years. Like 1900s, right? Okay, so let's fast forward to today, and yep. let's put that really beautiful Kujaku, Kujaku in here. Yeah, and then absolutely. we can really show it off. Great idea. Now I see it. I didn't see I couldn't even envision it, but now I see it now that they're all together. That is amazing. Yeah. She's going to jump, huh? Uh, yeah, she's good. She's good. Okay, now I really am I'm starting to understand. You can see where that, that Matsuba comes into, the Matsuba on both these koi. And the color. This, the yeah. color, the pattern. It's awesome, right? So awesome. And earlier in, in, in our series here on, on Kujaku, that one that had all the zigzag pattern. Right. The, the orange was more closer to that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so we're talking about the refinement over, you know, 100 yes. years. Let's just be so thankful that someone did that. I, I really thought Kujaku was, in, was uh, not as old as you're telling me. Sure. But I think that's really amazing. So here we have all three. And it's so cool to see what happened 100 years ago, or more than 100 years ago. Uh, you have this Matsuba, this Shusui, breeding together to make this awesome Kujaku. Talk about like the risk that was involved with the breeder because he's using one of his uh, one of his precious precious years uh, to breed and his resources and his resources his space and bam comes out with something so cool like this that we get to enjoy you know a hundred years later in in America nonetheless right right I mean could you imagine uh, where if he if the breeder the inventor of the Kujaku knew today that Kujaku were enjoyed all over the world. That's his legacy. Absolutely. What a beautiful way to contrast the ages and help 
help people understand what the breeders have gone through to to bring us the, the beauty and that we see today. Right. I love this. I dig for this. Awesome, man. That's why we do these. Yeah.